We've already looked at things like constructors and objects, but today I want to talk to you about a destructor. What happens when we want to make an object go away? So let me show you a real quick example of what I mean here. So I have create circle as a function, and all I'm doing is just create a generic circle. It has its default properties because it's a default constructor. And you notice that in addition to creating three circle objects here, two to a pointers and one non pointer, and then create calling this method create circle three times. That's all this code is really doing this simple example. I then am going to print out the number of circle objects. Well, when I go and do this, I should create one, two, three circles. And then in create circle, I'm going to go up here and create a new circle. But then that circle object should be destroyed when I get to the end of my function because it's no longer necessary. Even though I call create circle three times, those are just temporary circles and they should not be counted. So if I go and run this real quick, you'll notice, however, it counts the three that I create inside my main and then the three that I create inside of create circle, those never go away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a destructor in order to remove this. In my circle.h, I'm going to say tilde circle. And this looks a lot like your default constructor. There's no parameters. There's no return type. The only difference is I have a tilde in front of it. And this is what C++ knows to be the destructor. Inside my circle.cpp, I'm going to do a very similar type thing. Circle colon colon, so knows what class I'm talking about. And then tilde circle. Notice once again, there's no return type, not even void. And in this case, I'm going to go counter minus minus. Now when I run the code, the exact same code as before with the exception of the destructors, every time our code gets the end of our function create circle, that circle is destroyed. When it's destroyed, it calls the object's destructor, which reduces the counter. Now, that's kind of easy to work with. You might say, well, what's the point outside of keeping track of counters? Well, one of the big things is actually if we were to use pointers to objects. And that's real important because pointers to, out there in memory to objects stay around. And so we need to go and clean them up. So when our object is destroyed, if we had a pointer inside of it, we need to remove it. And let me show you how it's going to differ real quick. So I'm going to make one minor change to our main CPP file. And that is, I'm going to say circle star, still going to call my object circle equals new circle. This is just a default constructor. However, because it's a pointer, we're going to keep that information in memory. We're not going to get rid of it. What that means is our destructor is never called. You notice we still have six circle objects. Now, that's not a big deal if I have a really small object like this, and it's just six of them. When this program ends, it's going to clean up all that memory for me. But if I have a large, complex program that runs for hours and hours or days on end, and maybe I'm dealing with objects that are not just a few hundred bytes, but 10 or 20 kilobytes in size because they have large amounts of data they're dealing with. This is where we get memory leaks and we can literally run out of RAM to run our program. Even if we have several gigabytes on our computer like we do in a modern day system. So we have a couple of solutions and this is often actually used inside of our destructor. Whenever we go and create a pointer, we need to delete it. And I'm going to demonstrate this inside of our create circle. I'm also going to delete it. And simply, I'm going to use the delete keyword. And this is a built-in command to C++. And I'm say, going to say delete circle. Now, notice this is the reference to the object, OK? So I'm going to delete that reference right there. Now, when I run this, 
it removes that information from memory. This is no longer accessible. And because it called it destructor, it removed the counter and it decremented that counter. So we're only showing three objects. We create one, we delete it. Now, inside of our destructor, if we had created any pointers inside of our constructor, we would go in and we would delete those. And by deleting them, we free up more memory space. Well, what happens when we call that delete? Well, it calls that pointer's object's destructor. And we have a chain reaction going through and cleaning up all the memory that we might have allocated when we created this original pointer object. By doing so, we're being wise stewards of our memory and going to make it so we don't have those memory leaks that are somewhat notorious in poor programming. So we want to use that destructor not only for things like counter objects to keep track of how many objects we have created, but also to clean up our memory. Now, we don't have to do it just when we close our application. We can do it at any time in any function. So I'm going to come in here real quick. And after we call our original get counter, I'm going to notice, for example, maybe I don't use circle two. So I'm going to say delete circle two. Now, if I do that, and then I call my total number of objects a second time, you're going to notice the counter will go down. So instead of being three, it went to two. I cannot reference, I cannot use circle two. That object is destroyed. Now, the delete only works if I create a new object using that new keyword to create a pointer. So if I say delete, and then I'm going to reference my non-pointer circle object. And I named it like that so it would be really obvious. You're going to notice that right away Visual Studio is going to give me a warning message about it. Okay? Even before I go and try to run this. If I try to compile this and run this, it's going to give me an error. I say, whoa, there's build errors. And if you get something like this, you're going to notice we have here two little warning messages or error messages. Expression must be a pointer to complete the object type, okay? It's not a pointer. We can't delete it. And we also have delete cannot convert from circle to void. So it's going to prevent us from doing this. We can only use delete when we use the new keyword to create a pointer reference. And that's how we're going to use delete and use our destructor in order to clean up our memory counters and other things like that.